days. He wasn't trying to fit in. <laughs> if anything, he was an outcast because he wasn't doing it the way that they, that they wanted him to do it. He didn't come in the temple and, and, and ask for a seat to preach. He didn't ask for an opportunity to minister or to sing. He wasn't on the internet talking about, I'm a worshiper. He wasn't trying to get no, no attention drawn to him. He wasn't trying to get people to come. He was following prophecy. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. And quite simply, I would just say that you need to play your position. Getting ahead of myself. Number two, John had a twofold message. Number one, his announcement that the kingdom of God was at hand. That was his first message to the people. He was announcing that the kingdom of God is at hand. That was his first message. His second one was a call for moral, spiritual renewal to prepare oneself to be a citizen of the kingdom. This is important. A call for moral and spiritual renewal to prepare oneself to be a citizen of the kingdom. Now, that word citizen, now, if you want to be a citizen of the United States of America, there are certain things that you have to do in order to be a citizen. So why would you think that you can just go to heaven based on the fact that you want to go? There are things that you have to, 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 to accomplish. There are things that you have to be trying to do. There are things that need to be in order before you can just become a citizen of the kingdom of God. John was anointed to create an atmosphere of expectancy. John didn't need no praise team. He didn't need nobody to sing before he came up and started baptizing people. He didn't need them to, 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 to say, okay, I only baptize on the 4th, 5th, 6th, or whatever Sunday. This is, this is who he was. This is what he did. That's why he didn't take, he didn't, he didn't, he, when God give you something and your, and your commitment is uncompromising, you're going to do what God called you to do no matter what time it is, no matter what the season is. As for us in this ministry, we are Team Jesus USA. Send us, we will go. I don't care if it's north side, east side, west side, in the mall, in the streets, in the clubs. That's what people, man, I see y'all everywhere. Well, that's what I've been called to do. So my uncompromising commitment to God calls me to go. Yeah, we've been called to birthday parties, abortion rallies, uh, uh, Save the planet stuff, green, all that. No, that's not what I've been called to do. Even fundraisers. Hey, man, we're going to do a fundraiser. Can I hand some tracks out? Okay, I'm there. But I'm not just coming to no fundraiser. That's not what I've been called to do. There's 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. The Bible says, redeem the time because the days are evil. I have to do what God has called me to do. So John was anointed to create an atmosphere of expectancy. What, what, what it means is that when you come into a place... And John was there, you expected something to happen because of the way he carried himself and the anointing that he had on his life. Another point I want to make is we have to have a hunger for spiritual realities. We have to have a hunger for spiritual realities. In other words, we have to just be God, move. I want to see somebody get saved. I want to see uh, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit just fill that place like never before, not so we can say our event was blessed or that our event was off the hook, but just so that God can get the glory and somebody can get saved. They can leave out of there, man, I went over there, and oh my God, it just, as soon as I walked in, I just felt the, the power of God. Honestly, when is the last time you went someplace and you felt that way? That when you walked in, the place just was, oh, it hit you as soon as you walked in there and almost floored you to the ground. There are, there are some of us who have experienced that kind of move of God. You have to have a hunger for spiritual realities. Another thing, and finally in that section, is that you have to have a hunger for deeper, for a hunger far deeper than existing religious structures. You have to, you know, in other words, your hunger is not to go to the newest church because they got fresh smelling carpet, or they got a waterfall, or they got this, or they got that. Your hunger has to be deeper than that. Ain't nothing wrong with nice stuff. I love nice stuff. I see what I love seeing what God is doing with, with 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 men and their money to a certain extent when it comes to structures. But your hunger has to be deeper than that. Your hunger. The Bible says, "Blessed are they that wish to hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled." 
When you hunger and thirst after righteousness, that's when you're filled. When you're hunger and your hunger and thirst is just to go see and be Inspector Gadget, you, you're going to leave out of there empty. You got what you came for. You wanted to hear the choir? Well, you came and heard them. Now go home. Empty. You wanted to hear this man preach because he got a preaching gift? You heard him preach? Now go home, hungry and empty. You heard they got some good-looking girls over there? You came and seen their ugly butts? Now go home, empty. You have to have a hunger far deeper than existing religious structures. Okay, they got a big brand new church. That's not what we hunger and thirst for. Matthew 5, 6, like I said, says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Don't you want to be filled? Like Elizabeth was filled and Zacharias was filled? Finally, we're going to deal with the death of John the Baptist. Turn to your Bibles finally. We're still in Mark chapter 6. Verses 14, we're going to end with the death. And once again, we're talking about the uncompromising commitment to God. And our first subject was John the Baptist and his ministry. He was, he was used as our subject matter today to try to understand the uncompromising commitment to God. Verse 6 starts, and he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. I don't think that's what I want. It's supposed to be in 14. Sorry about that. 6.14. I was in 6.6. And King Harold heard of him, for his name spread abroad. He said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do he show forth themselves to him. Others said that it is Elias, and others said that is a prophet or as one of the prophets. Verse 16, But Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John, whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herod's sake, his brother Philip's wife. For he had married her. 18, For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Now, I want to stop right there for a quick second. <laughs> John the Baptist being called to be a forerunner for Jesus Christ. At the time, Herod was the, who governed the Jewish people in, at that time. He was immoral and, and doing stuff that wasn't right. John the Baptist saw it, took notice of it, spoke on it. He, he let him know, you're not right for marrying her because that's your brother's wife was put him in a bad position for them because at that time they had control over they can get you arrested they can which we're about to see i just want to make that clear for people who don't understand the story Philip's wife 18 19 therefore herodas go back to 18 for john had said unto herod it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife 19 therefore herodas had a quarrel against him and would have him killed but she could not she couldn't do it. So she devised a way in, 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 to get him killed. 20, for Harold feared John, knowing that he was a just man and a holy man. Harold feared John, knowing that he was a just man and a holy man. So sometimes we get attacked for being just and holy. It ain't that the man is jacked up. I don't know why he got all that drama going on. How, how, maybe he's just and holy. You ever read about Job? We so quick to throw folks underneath the bus because we see them going through stuff. Maybe they're going through because they're just and holy. And I observed him, and when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. 21, and when, and when a convenient day was come, the herald on his birthday made a supper to his lord, high captains and chief estates in Galilee, 22, and when, he, when, when the daughter of when and when the daughter of the said Herodas came in and danced and pleased Herod the, and then that sat with him the king said unto the damsel ask of me whatsoever thou wilt and I will give it thee 23 and he swore unto her whatsoever thou shalt ask me I will give thee unto half of my kingdom 24 and she went forth and said unto her mother what shall I ask and she said, the head of John the Baptist. Now we just read the scripture a few verses over. 
that she couldn't touch John. But now an opportunity has come for her to get at him. She see an opportunity. Bible talks about how when we when we go to church, how the wolf is just looking for the one that's lagging behind, looking for an opportunity to cause you to fall. So she see an opportunity. The daughter, the, look, the daughter has an opportunity to have half of the kingdom. So instead of half of the kingdom, she goes to her mom and says, what should I ask? Her mom, who has a problem with John the Baptist, because she ain't had no business Mary Harold, said, ask for the head of John the Baptist. So I'll be rid of this man. I don't have to hear him preaching against my, my sinful living no more. You wonder why folks be leaving churches. They, they hear stuff they don't like. All of a sudden, they got a problem with the ministry, ministry of the church because their spirit is getting vexed because the man of God is speaking things against that, that lifestyle where they're living. Not that he's speaking on you. He's speaking against that spirit. We struggle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. What shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, 25, and they came in straightway with haste unto the king and, and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. 26, and the king was exceedingly sorry. Yet for his oath's sake, and for the sake of which sat with him, he would not reject her. Peer pressure. We read over in the other verse that he invited all his buddies, all his friends, to his birthday party. Now he's sitting around these folks, and he, he said, oh man, I want my daughter to dance. But I got to offer her something. Like, what I gotta give you? I'll give you up to half my kingdom to dance for me in front of me and all my friends. She agreed to it. And it says, for, for that sake, for his own sake, and for the sake that sat with him, he would not reject her. 27. And immediately the king sent an executioner, immediately at the party, he sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison. 28. And brought the head into the in a charger and gave it to the damsel and the damsel gave it to her mother finally 29 and when his disciples heard of it they came and took up the, his corpse and laid it in the tomb flat out craziness but I want to go back to what John did John displayed uncompromising commitment to his call and ministry even with the with the with the fear, well, not necessarily fear. I don't want to use that word. Even with the, with the with the chance of knowing this man has the power that God has given him to have me dead and in prison, he still did not compromise preaching the truth. Preaching, I said at the beginning. I hear the Lord uh, having me go back to a moral, the moral there are moral issues in stake here because. Harold, in his position, I don't want to get into that. That's a whole other type of ministry and teaching. Because of who Harold was, and we already see right now, his, he already suspect because he got his, his uh, stepdaughter, who ain't, he, who ain't even supposed to be having as a stepdaughter, he got her dancing for him at his birthday party in front of his friends. She must have been a good dancer. He said, like, oh, I will give you up to a half of my kingdom he made an oath, and, and she ran up to her mom. Mom, mom, what should I ask for? John the Baptist. She wanted to silence the prophet. She wants to silence that word. Three little points that we out of here like last year. Number one, he did not try to be something that he was not. John the Baptist played his position. He never tried to be something that he was not. These are the final three points before we get out of here. Uh, pretty much summation of the whole thing. In John the Baptist's ministry and his uncompromising commitment to God, he never tried to be something that he was not. He played his position. I spoke earlier about an usher for a reason. An usher is a usher. That's what you do. Yeah, they can open the service of a prayer. They may even have a gift to play drums. But if you know that's who you are, be that. And you will have your uncompromised commitment to God will be sure. If you just be who you are, and, and just, just walk that out. Number two, he preached repentance according to the Bible, not what he thought. So often, we see things with our natural eye and we immediately speak on it. We we'll allow our ears and our eyes to dictate what God has already told us to speak. That ain't what he did. He, his message was about repentance. 
and being a citizen of the kingdom of God. That was his message. And finally, he stayed faithful in the face of adversity. Stay faithful in the face of adversity. Too many chicken saints, too many saints scared to stand on what's right. Well, I can't speak on that because they're going to they gonna look at me like I'm crazy. Who would you rather have you looking at you like you're crazy? People or God? We are going to have to stand before God one day and give an account. I pray that through this word, and through this first teaching of uncom uncompromising commitments to God, that you glean some things that can help you in your walk and your journey with God. I ain't ever, ever, ever in any way, shape, or form going to ever admit to be perfect. But two things I'm never going to do is, is stop and I'm not going to play. I'm not going to stop and I'm not going to play with what God's given me to do. <laughs> I have people telling me 24-7 24, 24 sometimes who I'm, who I'm not and who I'm not and, and what I am. And what, I'm like, that doesn't move me. What will move me is if, I, if within myself I allow people to tell me what God didn't tell me. When I get to the point where I will allow people to tell me what God didn't tell me, then I'm in trouble, and that will make me compromise who I am. I done had all kinds of, man, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this, you should try this, you should try that. If you don't know what God has told you and called you to be, you're going to be switching up every other day. You look good in blue. You look good in black. You should try this. How about this occupation? How about that career? How about this job? How about this college? How about that sport? How about this sport? Ooh, you tall, you should be a model. Or you, you sound good, you should be, you should be a rapper. What, what has God called you to be? What was it prophesied for you to be? And you say, well, my mom, my dad wouldn't say it, so I don't know. Get on your face, get in a closet, and talk to God until you hear God say something. He said he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. He will be with you to the very end. So you can have an uncompromising commitment to God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We thank you, Father God, that you are a God that cannot lie, nor the Son of, God, Son of Man, that you should repent. We thank you and praise you, Father God, that you've given us your word and things to glean from as to how we are to live by way of an example. Now, Father God, I just ask and pray, even as we begin to close, that there are those that are still a tad bit confused, possibly about the things they may have heard. I just ask and pray, Father God, that they take your word and apply it and hide it in their heart, that they may not sin against you, that they will seek an understanding from you. Not so much from me, Father God. I was planting seeds. I was preaching your word. I was saying, But that they would seek from you what they may have heard to help them understand a little bit better the things that they have to do to be uncompromised in this day and this time. It is so easy for those to compromise in the name of Jesus Christ the things that you've given them to do, Father God. But if we stand close to the word, as, as close as humanly possible, and do the things you call us to do, we will not compromise. We will not water it down. We will not back up in the face of adversity or of any, any kind of fear. I just ask and pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that people be filled with the Holy Ghost. It was spoken that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. It was spoken that Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray that people are filled with the Holy Ghost. We used to pray for that. We used to go to services and folks was filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray that we start baptizing people like we did back in the day because John the Baptist ministry was about baptismal and repentance. These are not hard things to preach and do, but we have somehow compromised. We're more, we're more interested in concerts and, and singing and dancing and poetry and stand-up comedy and sit-down comedy and roll over and play dead comedy. We need to have some baptismals in the name of Jesus. We need to have people filled with the Holy Ghost so our faith is not uncompromising uncom and our commitment to you, God, is not compromising. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to keep us on this straight, narrow path, Father God. I just pray in the name of Jesus as we approach another season of our lives, Father God, another chapter that you help people understand that we need God more, not less. We pray that the power and anointing of God go across this land like we've never seen before. It's not so important that they take God out of stuff because we're here. We are the God. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light. 
in the name of Jesus. I just pray, Father God, that people stand up. And I know they're out there, and I know they're doing it. I just pray for more and more. It's like we pray for more of you, Lord Jesus. We love you, and we praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. My position in the body of Jesus Christ is an apostle. If you ever need us for anything, feel free to call us at 614-723-9770. And we will do our very best. Don't call us on Saturday mornings when we have a service. Somebody tried to call us while we was having service. I'm going to turn the ringer off. But call us, and we'll, be, we'll do our very best to help you do what you need to do for God or with God. We love you. Like the Bible says, we're supposed to love you. We're not perfect, but we're not playing. If you ever want to come and visit us, give us a call, and we'll let you know what time we're, we're doing it. This is our studio recording service. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.